Hey, this is Max Cougar, and this is the second QC tutorial. And before we start, I would just like to tell you guys that um, I do have a website that you can go to, and you can go, you can come here to get help with QC, or you can just visit the games that I'm making, or just chat with us. Period. So the website is revamped.foremotion.com. The link is in the description, and just come here and talk with us. All right, so let's let's kick this off. Open up the folder where you have all your QC files in, and open up the program. All right, I'll click the little plus over here. And we're gonna be working in weapons.qc, so open that up, and scroll down to oh, I don't know about right here, this function right here. Okay, highlight all of this. This is the contents of this function. Highlight all that. And click the backspace button to delete it all until you got just this all right this right here this is another form of comments you see these this is the beginning of the comment this is the end of the comment everything in between these two little things right here everything in between these two things is is ignored by the compiler just like this is ignored by the compiler <clears throat> all right so let's get into the function okay this is the name of the function you can name it anything but I wouldn't rename this one being that it's called by another function so I wouldn't mess with this these two things this is the walls of the function the boundaries everything inside these two little curly braces is what happens in the function this right here that's what kind of function it is it's just a void function void functions are pretty common you go through the quake C, you'll see for yourself void, um, void, 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 yeah, you get the point. All right, so it's the basic. There's also other kinds. There's float. Remember that float, it holds a numerical value, but in a float function, it has to return a numerical value. Return some sort of number, like return a number, like that, or just anything. Then there is string. Remember, string holds character, character values. Return hello. That returns a string. Or vector. Remember, vectors hold a place in the world. And then there is also entities, which entities are things in the world. But we're just going to use regular void. All right. So we're just going to write a simple little function. We start off with local entity bullet what this does is this like makes an entity it tells quake that we're going to use a new entity and the local part says that the entity can only be used in this function no other function can use this entity you can make a new one like down here in this function local entity bullet bullet but see this bullet and this bullet they don't even know that each other exist. That's the cool part, because they're local to each function. All right. So now let's get the bullet in the world, and to do that, we do bullet equals spawn. So this spawns the bullet inside the world. So after this, at this point, this bullet is in the quake world now. Now let's give it some sort of move type. So move type bullet dot move type equals move type fly missile all right this right here it just it gives it this move type which this is actually a value it's actually a number and if you want to find that you can go to defs.qc up here and scroll down to right here and this is all the different types of move types right here you got move type bounce missile bounce fly missile no clip you know bounce would probably bounce on the floor but we're going to use fly missile because that will give the same effect as a bullet flying through the air. Bullet.solid equals solid B box. This code right, this line right here gives the bullet some sort of solid value. Right here, the solid B box says that it can, um, it's solid with the bounding box. So it can affect other things in the world. If you were just to put solid um, not, that would mean it was it's not solid at all 
and it can go through stuff. But we're gonna make it D-Box for bounding box. Next, who owns this bullet? Well, Self owns this bullet. And Self is the player. Self is the player in this function. Just get that. Self is the player. Just remember that. In this function, because um, the player is calling this fire function. He's shooting the gun. The player is. So let's give the bullet a class name. And what a class name does is it gives this entity, the bullet entity, it gives it a name that um, code can refer to. So we're going to name it bullet just because it's casual, but you can name it anything like Fooey or Gary or Thomas or whatever, but I'm naming him bullet. All right. Then what we need to do is we need to give him a touch function. What happens when this bullet touches something? We're going to give it the bullet touch. And be careful when you're coding because code is really case sensitive. You will get an unknown error or warning if you're messing, you're not using proper case sensitivity. <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't really matter. Just be consistent with it though. All right, so if you try to compile right now, you're gonna get an error. Unknown value, bullet touch. Why it said that is because the bullet is trying to touch something and then it calls this function, but this function doesn't exist. We have to write it. So right above the function we're working in, go void and then the two little brackets, bullet touch equals two curly braces, which is the walls of the function. And then we're gonna say remove self. Okay, self is not the player in this case though. The player would be self.owner. Why the reason this is self is because look, when you're when the bullet is calling some sort of function like this, bullet.touch, you're gonna have to put your eyes, you're gonna have to put your mind in the eyes of a bullet when you're doing this. So self or bullet turns into self when you're calling when it's calling a function. If you want to call to your own self, you'd say self.owner. Which remember we said the owner was the player. Bullet.owner equals self. So that would be self.owner. Alright, next we are going to we're going to do a set model which I know I'm going out of order, but I just want to show you guys something so you can see for yourself what you know, pieces of code does. So I had to add the little brackets and now are the parentheses. And now we're going to do bullet, right bullet, the comma. And this is saying that we're going to set a model for the bullet. And then there's a string, you have it progs bullet.mdl. Okay, this is a string. Remember, it holds character values. Then this right here, this is a folder. It looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? If you go to the ID1 folder, you'll see a folder in there called progs, right there. That's what this is referring to. So when you do this, it's saying go inside the progs folder and grab the bullet.mdl file and load that up for the, for the bullet, for that entity. <clears throat> Next, so let's do a set size. Set size to parentheses and and the strings and then bullet. We're setting the size for the bullet entity. Now actually add, take away these, take away the quotation marks and you're gonna add one of them. Zero, zero, zero. This is a vector, comma, zero, zero, zero. And then the little thing, whatever this is, I can't remember. Okay, that's setting the size with two vectors. This is basically saying that the bullet is nothing. It's drawing a zero, it's drawing a null box around the model, which you do want to do that for bullets. You don't want it to be in this big, huge model or this big, huge, like, box for collision. Okay, now we're gonna do, um, we're going to do set origin. Put the little brackets or the little parentheses now you're going to do bullet comma 
we're setting the origin for the bullet and by the way if you don't know what origin means it means like a spot or a place so self dot origin plus now vector 0 0 16 okay this is a vector this this right here is a vector too that's a vector so we're adding the player's origin the player's spot and we're adding this vector to it. This right here is the x, x axis, that's the y axis, and this is the z axis. So we're taking the player's origin, we're adding, we're going up 16 units on the z axis for the bullet. That's where the bullet's gonna spawn. So the player's origin and up 16 units. All right, so let's go to file, save, compile, should compile just fine, lots of warnings, yeah. Minimize, okay, you're gonna get a file called progs.dat. You're gonna need to take that, I'm gonna copy it, and you're gonna replace it with the one in your folder. And replace it, yes. Okay, run the game. And just wait for it to load, waiting. All right, now what's gonna happen is you're gonna spawn a model when you shoot. See, right there, you spawned yourself a model right there. It doesn't move at all. You haven't specified any speed for it yet, but you got a model. All right, open back up the code. All right, now right below bullet touch. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be there, but that's where we're going to do it. Go make vectors. We'll print these. And then you're going to do self.v angle. And that's just setting, that is setting, um, that's setting a vector in the V angle, which the V angle is the player's viewport angle. The, you know, where you see the gun and stuff, that's the little first person view. That's where it's setting it at. So that's necessary when you're using things like V forward and V up and V right. All right. So now we're going to do bullet dot velocity and velocity again is speed equals v forward times 300 so this is making the bullet speed go v forward so it's going to make it go forward from the player's viewport angle at 300 quake units all right now let's save compile take the progs.dat and replace it and start up the game. And now, now it will have speed. See, now it's going at 300 quake units. See, there. I'm pretty accomplishing. All right, now we're gonna, you know, mess with some stuff. Now go to the little move type right here, and change it to move type bounce. And let's change this value to 700, and see what happens save compile and replace the progs.dat again now run it see now it's going even faster and it's bouncing see it's bouncing yep now I think what I did on the remove statement, I said remove self dot owner, but it didn't really do that. So now I'm taking the owner away. Now it'll actually remove the thing. But that's gonna conclude. That's gonna include this tutorial. Hope it helped. This is Mexico signing out.